And we talked about how Alex had done some additional searches, or that account had, about how to shoot with the AR. And you heard how Alex was going to the shooting range in Fremont County from Detective Kaikamanu, and that was before and after this attempted shooting of Tammy. And you heard from Agent Wright how he was going to the shooting range in Rexburg, and he was practicing to shoot long distances. And you heard from Investigator Edwards, he talked to you about how he looked at that gun. He looked at that Grendel 6.5, and it had a pin that was loose. And he explained to you about how if that pin had come loose, that could cause the gun to misfire. Alex didn't know why the gun misfired. That's why he was looking at shooting an AR in the cold. Instead, we do not know of any other attempted shootings of Tammy Daybell. Instead, what we know is that on October 19th of 2019, just before 6 a.m., Chad Daybell and Garth Daybell made a call to 911 to report Tammy's death. Remember how Garth described her. She's stiff and cold. Remember what Chad said. She's clearly dead. A little over 24 hours from reporting his wife's death, Chad messages Lori, I know exactly how you feel. I'm feeling sad but it isn't for the reason everyone thinks. His wife had been reported dead a little over 24 hours before he sent that to Lori. You heard the description of Tammy, stiff and cold, clearly dead. And yet, Garth and Chad say they put her back on the bed. Garth says he hears a thud and his dad calls for him. However, Garth and Chad were consistent. Tammy didn't fall out of bed. Where's the thud? They both describe the top part of Tammy falling out of the bed and her legs being tangled in the sheets. And you heard from the coroner that when she arrived on scene, there was this rag in the bedroom. And she took the rag and she wiped the, the foam or the sputum that was coming out of Tammy's mouth. But what you also heard from her was it was a rag Chad had already been using. Tammy's clearly dead. The body's been moved. The foam's been wiped. And if we back up to October 18th of 2019, we know Lori was in Hawaii. She was in Hawaii with Melanie Pulowski. You heard how Alex took her down to Las Vegas to drop Lori off at the airport shortly before that. But what's more telling than who was in Hawaii is who wasn't. Melanie Pulowski told you Alex Cox was supposed to go with them on that trip. Alex didn't go because Chad needed help with something. Tammy was possessed. Her death percentage was low. Alex believed Chad 100%. And you heard from several witnesses Detective Kaikamanu, Investigator Edwards, and Agent Balance. The device associated with Alex Cox was at a church just 2.6 miles from the Daybell residence from 10.07 p.m. to 10.45 p.m. on October 18th of 2019. Chad needed Alex's help with something. You heard testimony. Alex didn't know anyone else in the area. He knew Chad. Alex didn't know Tammy, but he knew Chad. At 11.53 p.m., about a seven, the phone, again, there was a data point, about a seven-minute drive from the church.
Garth would have gotten home between 1 and 1.30 from his employment, you heard Garth tell you that when he got home, he saw two lumps in his parents' bed, assumed it was them. He didn't go check on them. He didn't verify anything to see if they were okay. However, you heard from Micaiah Baglin that what Garth told him, it was when Garth got home from work, he found his mom dead in her bed and his dad was nowhere to be found. And you heard from Deputy Greenalch, and you heard from Deputy Coroner Wilmore and Coroner Brenda Dye. And you heard them talk about what Chad told them when they were on scene. And the statements changed over time. The statements changed as new people came in. Coroner Dye mentioned something about seizures. All of a sudden, oh yeah, Tammy was having seizure-like activity. Nothing in Tammy's medical records support low blood pressure. Nothing in her medical records support seizures. Nothing in her medical records support any kind of a negative drug interaction between homeopathic medications or any other medications Tammy was on. Those were statements provided by Chad Daybell. Initially, based on the information provided solely by Chad, no autopsy was ordered. However, just weeks later, the Fremont County Sheriff's Office was contacted by the Gilbert Police Department about that attempted shooting of Brandon Boudreaux. They'd linked the, the Jeep that was used in that to the Fremont County area, and more specifically, they wanted them to check if it was at Chad Daybell's, on Chad Daybell's property. Shortly after that, an investigation was launched by Fremont County into Tammy Daybell's death. This included exhuming her body. Her body was exhumed so the Utah Medical Examiner's Office could perform a full autopsy and conduct an investigation into the cause and manner of death. And they, in fact, did that, and we'll come back to that in a little bit. After Tammy's death, you heard how Chad told multiple people that he couldn't stay at the house anymore. He was going to move in with a friend. This was right after Tammy's passing. You also heard how Tammy died on October 19th of 2019, or that's when she was pronounced dead. That was a Saturday. Funeral was held in Springville, Utah on Tuesday, one working day to get everything ready. You heard Todd Gilbert say how it felt like Chad just wanted to get it over with. And you also heard from Samantha Gwilliam that she had concerns because Chad indicated he didn't want his name on the headstone. Tammy was going to be buried alone in Springville, Utah. You also heard Patty later talk about she went to the funeral and Chad's talk was disturbing to her. It was disturbing to her because he talked about Tammy's depression and how she was hard to live with. Patty thought that was a little off-putting. Alice Gilbert also thought it was odd, but she thought it was odd that Chad spoke. In her experience, usually it's too difficult for a spouse to give a talk at the funeral. Steve Schultz, who was the mortician from Utah, indicated he thought the timing of the funeral and the fact that there was no autopsy and that Chad didn't want an autopsy was a red flag. So much so that he said, he asked Jason William, Chad's brother-in-law, do you think he killed Tammy? When we talk about the timeline of October 18th to the 19th, you can see the communication, text between Chad and Lori, Lori and Alex, Chad and Alex, Alex and Lori, and it goes on. They're in constant communication that day between the 18th and the 19th over that time span. Tammy Daybell 
had an autopsy conducted by the Office of the Utah Medical Examiners. They determined the manner of death to be homicide and the cause to be asphyxiation. Tammy had life insurance. And we talked about a couple different policies. One was Primerica. It was a policy that had been in existence since 2002. Both Chad and Tammy were insured and they were both each other's beneficiaries. However, Tammy also had insurance through her employment, through the Ballard Insurance, or we also called it Life Map. She had a base of 50,000, and on September 8th, just a little over a month before her passing, she raised her individual amount to the maximum of 80,000, so that policy was now a total of 130,000. Chad submitted claim forms to Primerica and to Life Map. On both claim forms, he indicated the cause of death was that she died in her sleep. Chad then received and deposited $300,000 from Primerica on October 31st of 2019, and then deposited $130,000 from Life Map on November 8th of 2019. Again, on both claimant statements, he put the cause of death was she died in her sleep. And maybe more telling on life map, because Chad told people that Tammy was having medical issues. She was ha having trouble breathing. She was having shaking fits, dizzy spells. He provided information to try to explain her death. However, on the life map claim form, under the question, when did the health of the deceased first become impaired, he wrote October 18th of 2019. When Tammy upped that life map insurance, Chad signed off on it too. Chad knew she had increased that life insurance. You heard how just days after Tammy's death, Chad went and visited with Alice and Todd Gilbert. And he told them about Lori. And shortly after, he brought Lori to meet with them. And Lori and Chad talked about their plans for a future, their plans to be together. What else was telling about that visit? They ask about kids. Chad's response to Alice, Lori had a daughter that died. Tylee hadn't been found yet. They went to dinner with Chad's parents, and you heard from Sheila Daybell. Lori told her, I have a daughter that died. We know on May 6th and 7th, Chad and Lori Googled searches for malachite rings. This was during a time that Tammy and Charles were still alive. We know on August 14th, Lori attempted to purchase a malachite ring. Again, on August 25th of 2019, she again attempted to purchase a ring. Charles was dead. Tammy was alive. On October 2nd, Lori purchased two malachite rings. Then she also purchased one more. The other ring was a men's size 11 and a half. And what's telling is that ring was returned on October 4th for a size 11. Then on October 25th, it was returned for a size 10. And that ring wasn't returned. That ring, however, resembled the ring Chad Daybell was wearing in their wedding photos when he and Lori got married on October on November 5th of 2019, just 17 days after Tammy's death. Chad filled out a rental application for Hawaii. What did he put in there? Clean couple with no pets or children. No pets, no children. Chad and Lori had been messaging in July about a movie. Lori ended up telling him, looks like Kauai a lot. Chad, hopefully we will be there someday soon together. Chad's response again, that is the plan. That is the plan. What is the plan? To be to Hawaii, to be in Hawaii together, to be in Hawaii unencumbered by earthly obstacles, unencumbered by earthly relatives. Chad and Lori got married on the beach in Kauai on November 5th of 2019.
Charles was dead, Tammy was dead, Kylie and JJ hadn't been found, no children, no earthly obstacles, married together on the beach. Chad and Lori's bliss didn't last long because Kay Woodcock reported her grandson JJ is missing. And you heard from Detective Hermosillo how in November of 2019, he, along with some other officers, responded to 765 Pioneer Road. You heard how immediately upon arrival, untruths were told. Alex said JJ was with Kay. He said he didn't have a phone number for Lori. Chad said he barely knew Lori and didn't have her phone number. Lori said JJ was with Melanie Gibb and that Chad was her brother's friend. Chad and Lori were married. Hi, Lori. Sorry to bother you again. Yeah. What have, uh, what have Melanie get hold of your friend down there, Melanie? Melanie? Well, they were going to Frozen 2 today. This is Becky Stubbs. Hello. Me so, we're here. Oh, this is a big mess. I just talked to the guy on the phone. And what did he ask you? He was just saying that he wanted to do a well check on JJ. So, JJ would be where? He's in Arizona. Who's he with in Arizona? He's with one of my friends in Arizona. Oh. Hi. Oh, hey. you got a notepad? No. Let me get one. Uh, hey. No, no. Come here. You mind if he comes in? Oh, so. Are you, Who's the friend he's with? My friend Melanie. Her yeah. son has autism. Oh, so if it was gone on, if you on, but no, it's a lot of stuff. So. Well, that's why we're concerned because it just was kind of weird. It is very weird. I've had to move around a lot. One of my brothers is trying to kill me. Not the brother that lives here, obviously. He's kind of my protector. Mm. But. Everyone is causing me trouble right now. So. We don't want to cause a lot of trouble. How long have you been here? We've only been here since September. Okay. We moved up here in September. My daughter to go to BYUI. We had two detectives over here trying to. I'm looking for you uh, a little while ago. Oh, because I was at the store. And they ran into. Well, probably one of your brothers. In My the back brother here. and his friend, probably. Oh, who's been that? Moving. Chad. Chad from around here. Mm-hmm. What's his last name? Bill. Okay. On that same day, Chad called Melanie Gibb, and he told her, "The police are going to call. Don't answer." Melanie talked about how Chad sounded scared. She asked Chad, JJ's not with Kay? Chad's response, no. Chad knew JJ wasn't with Kay. Later, Lori did reach out to Melanie, and she asked Melanie to lie to the police and say JJ was with her, that she'd taken him to the movie Frozen. She even went so far as to ask Melanie to snap a photo of some kids to try to pass it off as JJ. You heard from Melanie Gibb. She trusted Chad. She trusted Lori. They had told her law enforcement was dark. She initially told police JJ had been with her. Pretty quickly after, she corrected her statement with law enforcement and told them she never had JJ. He'd never been with her. She didn't know where he was. On December 8th of 2019, Melanie Gibb decided to place a phone call to Chad and Lori. Okay. I did have a question that I asked Al at one point, your brother, um, if, um, if I wanted to know, you know, um, like where he was. And he said I did not want to know and that he could not be found. So what does that mean? I don't know why he would say that, but it's the same story. Like I, yeah. I 
I don't even want Al to know. I don't want anybody to know so that nobody has to be worried about it. I mean, nobody has to be questioned about it so he can be safe. Chad knew JJ wasn't with Kay. Alex said Melanie didn't want to know where he was. Is JJ safe? He is safe and happy. Okay, well. Remember how JJ was found. He was found discarded in Chad Daybell's backyard. Lori said he's safe and he's happy. Chad Daybell is standing there with Lori when she makes those statements. No chime in from Chad. But Chad knew Kay didn't have him. So is there kids that are not involved or there what what are they talking about? So I'll have a clue if they show up at my house. If they show up, you can just give them the attorney's name and say, We're not talking to you without an attorney. Okay. No, there. Well, it's a it's my sister in law. It's just a bunch of people that are starting trouble for no reason. Yes. <laughs> you just heard an excerpt of Chad talking to Jason Williams. But before that, on that December 8th call with Melanie Gibb, Chad ends up chiming in, and he's trying to explain the Tammy situation. People are out to get us. People are making stuff up, such as my sister-in-law. Tammy died naturally. Tammy died in her sleep. Tammy was having health issues. Her heart was about to give out. My kids will testify to that. So is there kids that are not involved or there, what, what are they talking about? So I'll have a clue if they show up at my house. If they show up, you can just give them the attorney's name and say, we're not talking to you without an attorney. Okay. No, there. Well, it's a, it's my sister-in-law. It's just a bunch of people that are starting trouble for no reason. <laughs> it's separate from the Tammy situation. <laughs> Again, Chad trying to distance and explain the Tammy situation separate from the kids. But it wasn't separate. Chad determines if people are dark or possessed. Chad rates their death percentage. And we all know what Chad said. Dark people possess people. The body has to die. JJ, Tylee, Tammy, all labeled as dark by Chad Daybell. Um, it's a simple situation, but we just can't tell you because then you'd have to be involved. <laughs> yeah, exactly. no, I, I get it. That's fine. So at that point, they're talking about bringing down like a host of like FBI people involved and stuff. And I'm like, it's, um, it's a, I don't, just a, want, yeah. you know, <laughs> I don't need that. <laughs> it's Christmas. So, you know, that's where I'm just going. All right. Uh, that's interesting. So. Uh, okay. Well, you don't know anything, which yeah. is great. <laughs> you don't know anything. No, I don't know anything, and so that's good news at that point in time. So, okay. I, I don't know how they would have done that other than Heather. I... You heard from both Melanie Gibb and Jason Gwilliam. They recorded these calls. They were both hoping to help locate JJ and Tylee. They still hadn't been located. You also heard some recorded calls that were recorded by Ian Pulowski. In those calls, you hear Chad and Lori repeatedly refer to law enforcement as dark. Some of them are even disciples of Cain. They're so dark. Melanie Pulowski at one point asks what she's supposed to do about Detective Hermosillo because he's not going to stop. He's not going to stop until he finds those kids and she wants advice from Chad. What does she do? Chad's response, get out of his way. He doesn't say, and Lori doesn't say, we'll produce the children, we'll come and help you. Chad actually tells her, well, well, they are going to continue to bug you because you're the only one they can locate right now. She's the only one they knew where she was.
back in October, Lori had messaged Alex or had messaged Chad about Alex. She had some concerns. She ends up telling Chad he would be the one they use to get us both. Who is they? Law enforcement. You heard Melanie Gibbs' statement in that recording. Alex said, I don't want to know where JJ is. You know who labels people dark. You know what has to happen to the body. And Alex believed Chad 100%. In November of 2019, Chad gave Alex a patriarchal blessing. And you progressed and were selected by the Savior himself to be part of the fourth creation. Great warriors were needed in that creation. Powerful goddesses were needed to be protected and you were selected to help protect your sister and you helped her in numerous probations as a defender. You have a special bond even from the pre-mortal world. You connected there and as she grew in power, you were right there beside her. Always. Alex was Lori's protector. I am Chad Daybell. It is November 24th, 2019, a Sunday afternoon, 5.15 p.m. We are going to give Alex Lamar Cox a patriarchal blessing. Alexander Lamar. Mm -hmm. Alexander Lamar Cox. On this special day, I lay my hands upon your head to give you a patriarchal blessing as part of a mem the member of the Church of the Firstborn that you have earned the privilege to be a member of. Alex is a member of the Church of the Firstborn. You heard testimony about Lori and Chad's mission. Their mission, part of it, to gather the 144,000. Chad was a self-appointed leader or gatherer and the leader of the Church of the Firstborn. You have already assisted us in ways that can never be repaid. And you will continue to do so as you move forward in this. Alex had already done things for them that could never be repaid. I just want you to know that at this time, the Savior is saying unto me, well done. Thy soul is cleansed. All is well. And now you'll begin into your terrestrial phase of this existence, that you'll be a powerful servant. I bless you with that knowledge that you will now move forward as a true warrior in ways that can be demonstrated through not only physical action, but through spiritual power that is coming to you and that will be bestowed upon you. Alex had been cleaned. Whatever acts he'd done, he'd been absolved of them now, according to Chad. On December 11th of 2019, Tammy Daybell's body was exhumed. Chad and Lori had a conversation with Alex that day, and Zulema talked to Alex after that. She said Alex seemed worried when he got off the phone. She questioned him. Alex ended up telling her he was worried he was going to be their fall guy. When pushed further, Alex said, I am either a man of God or I am not. 
Alex believed Chad 100%. Melanie Gibb had asked Lori at one point if she believed what Chad told her. Lori had responded that she did, but that if he was a Satan, he sure was a good one. On December 12th of 2019, or excuse me, her, um, on December 12th of 2019, Alex Cox ended up dying the day after Tammy's body with it was exhumed. An autopsy was conducted on Tammy's body, and you heard from both Dr. Eric Christensen and Dr. Lily Marsden. They both unequivocally testified the manner of death was a homicide, the cause asphyxiation. And you heard them talk about the different manners of death, and you heard Dr. Christensen just yesterday talk about no sign the asphyxiation was a suicide, no sign the asphyxiation was natural, no sign the asphyxiation was accidental. That left homicide, death by the hands of another. They talked about the bruises on Tammy. They talked about the fact those could be consistent with being restrained. They talked about the exhaustive toxicology tests that were done to try to ensure they had the correct cause of death. They talked about root, they talked about considering all the other natural possibilities, seizures, cardiac arrhythmia, and they talked about how they went through that process to reach their final conclusion. They talked about they followed their normal protocol. They gathered evidence. They gathered information. And you heard Dr. Christensen talk about that. Normally, you give a medical history. With his patients, they can't. They have to rely on collateral sources and collateral information. They gather the medical records and they gather reports and statements surrounding that person's death so they ensure they reach the correct conclusion. Again, both of them were consistent in their findings, homicide by asphyxiation. You further heard from multiple of Tammy's coworkers and friends that she didn't have any known health issues. Tammy was very active by all accounts. She participated in fitness classes. She participated in clogging. She never missed work. She was reliable and a hard worker. The only reported health concerns to law enforcement came from Chad Daybell. You heard several officers talk about that, agents, investigators. Chad's kids didn't want to talk to law enforcement. They didn't want to provide information. The information came from Chad. <laughs> Chad told people different things regarding Tammy's death. Heather Daybell, Jason William, the coroner. Tammy was sick, coughing, found her at 6 a.m. dead. Also to Heather Daybell, no autopsy because the coroner had found matter in her throat. There was no testimony of that. She died of an embolism, also told to Heather Daybell. Chad said Tammy woke up at midnight throwing up and died at 2 a.m. Consistent that it's an embolism, different time of death to Alice Gilbert. Tammy was sick, coughing, went to bed around 10. Chad went at one and found her cold and dead on the floor to Hannah Munoz. Again, remember Hannah went through the funeral line or the viewing line twice, once with each parent. Second time, Chad said she'd been coughing violently. Both went to bed at 10. He woke up at midnight and her body fell out of bed. <laughs> 